So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all for being on time. We really appreciate that always. Uh, my name is Jenny Bevel and I am the Educator and Outreach Specialist at the Missoula Art Museum. Um, we are here today to share with you a new distance learning platform that we created just before COVID. What good timing. Um, and we are populating the platform in conjunction with Inspired Classroom with more and more courses that you can utilize with your students. You can go through the courses as a class or you can assign um, the students to work on the modules um, independently. And the way I set it up is that it could really be useful for grades four and up all the way through high school. It's arts integrated. There are standards attached for Indian education for all, social studies, English language arts, and of course, visual arts. So uh, you'll see all this as I show you the platform. And um, we hope that it will be really useful for you um, this year. So our time together this morning, we're gonna do about 15 minutes of intro and I'm gonna show you where to find these resources online. They're all free and they're all self-paced. Um, so you can dip in and out, you know, as works with your curriculum. Then we'll spend about 15 minutes looking at a piece of art from our contemporary American Indian art collection and talking about an exhibition called Love Letters to the Collection. This exhibition is on view. We are open at MAM. Um, I'm coming to you from home today so that I didn't have to wear a mask um, on the call, but the museum is open. Um, we're not open for groups, um, except for small group tours that are booked in advance, no okay. class field trips. I don't think anybody's doing that anyway. Sam, did you wanna jump in? Um, I only have one other outside thing that needs to be done, and I'm doing my hair, packing my stuff, and I'm going to be... Oh, sorry, I'm trying to... Um, one more time? I just wondered if you wanted to say anything. You looked oh, like yes. you were... Oh, sorry. I'm trying to navigate a whole bunch going on at once. I apologize. Okay. That. I just wanted to say thank you, everybody, for being here. And also thank you to Blackfoot Communications for sponsoring the conference this year. We're going to have a really great time during this last session. And I hope everybody enjoys it. Thank you so much. And Jenny, whenever you're ready. Okay, you bet. Um, and so, yeah, feel free to put your mic off for now. But once we start looking at the artwork, it's... Oops, I was muted for a moment. <laughs> no worries. Um, it's often hard to tell who's driving. Um, Sam, do I have ability to share my screen? Yes, you That's do. It. Okay, great. So let me start again. 15 minutes, we'll do intro. I'll show you the online course. I'll walk you through getting on. It's not hard. If you've done an inspired classroom course before, you're already in and you can just choose our challenges. Um, we'll do about 15 minutes of talking and looking at art and practicing that. I would love for you all to be, you know, pretty comfortable doing that with your students. And then 15 minutes of actual art making. Um, I'll, I'll cue you some supplies to grab from around your house. You can do the project with a paper and pencil. You don't need anything fancy. All of our projects this year are you make it with what you've got because that's sort of the world we're living in right now. Um, and 11.15 to 11.30, we'll do a share and I'll give you the email address so that you can email your art project directly to us at, at MAM if you want to. Um, so that's what our hour is gonna look like. And I would love to start by reading our acknowledgement statement which we have developed in, in conjunction with tribal leaders in our area. And we read this statement of acknowledgement before all of our public programs. And we encourage you, um, the National Museum of the American Indian has also encouraged us to encourage teachers to read an acknowledgement statement at school, acknowledging the native territories that your school sits on. So I'll share ours with you now. MAM is situated on the traditional ancestral territories of the Salish and Pondere peoples. MAM is committed to respecting the indigenous stewards of the land it occupies. Their rich cultures are fundamental to artistic life in Montana and to the work of MAM. So the three kind of pillars that we build education at MAM on are acknowledgement, access, and action. 
So acknowledgement might look like that. It might look like a, an acknowledgement statement. It also um, might look like acknowledging the tribal affiliations of the artists that you're sharing, which will be um, doing that also. So great, I'm seeing everybody signing in and, and talking about renewal credits, fantastic. Um, I would love for you to take a moment and also type into the chat maybe a reason that you wanted to take an art making class this morning or maybe a reason that you wanted to check out MAM for resources. So if everybody wants to just take a moment and type in why you're here this morning, that would be awesome. And I'm gonna start sharing the, uh, my screen. Yeah, great, Ignite Art in my classroom, I love it. All of what I'm gonna show you today is arts integration. So you don't have to teach a separate social studies and English unit. You can put English, social studies, Indian education all together. Um, wonderful, arts integration, music, resources. You've been to MAM, wonderful. We are really hoping to replicate the experience of coming to the museum as closely as we can through our online platform, which is called Museum as Megaphone. And we really wanna amplify, that's the megaphone idea, amplify our American Indian art collection, those artists' voices, but also amplify the student voices. So in all the courses, we'll be giving you an opportunity for the students to share their work via hashtags and social media. So it shouldn't be really much more effort for you to enable the kids to connect across the state. So we're really looking um, great, wonderful. And these resources will be here for you always. Even if the exhibition comes down in physical space, the resources will live on on the Megaphone platform. So I'm gonna share my screen now and I'm gonna show you, actually, can I just see a show of hands before I share it? How many of you have been into Inspired Classrooms site before? Okay, a few. Um, actually maybe about a third. So this is such a great resource for you to know about beyond MAM. Inspired Classroom has tons of challenges that you can do virtually, and some of them have live days. So we're hoping with Love Letters to have a couple of live days, which would be a time that your students could log on and be with us virtually in real time from the galleries at the museum. So we had this conception even before COVID because we were hoping to reach out to schools for whom it was too far to travel to come to ma'am. And now we have yet another reason um, to do that. So I'm going to show you the platform. And I'm gonna type, I'm gonna put the link into the chat. So if you want to log on and do this in real time with me, actually I lost the chat. Um, Sam, could you pop in icchallenge.org um, into the chat for me? And so if you wanna go on ahead and log on and get into the platform, this is what it looks like once you're in. Um, you'll create a password and log in for yourself, and then you'll have a teacher dashboard with the purple stripe across the top that identifies you as a teacher. Um, and then it will say create class. So you'll click, actually you'll scroll down first and you'll see open challenges here. And when you scroll down, you'll see love letters to the collection. We'll have lots of challenges up, but when you see Museum as Megaphone, you'll know that's a Missoula Art Museum challenge. And what you're looking for is this little code right here. So you can just copy that code, go back up, create your class, and you can name your class, you can put the number of students, the number of teams, it'll lead you through setting up your class so that you can track what your students are doing if they're working independently. And this is where the challenge code goes right there. And then you just click submit. And what you'll come out with is what my dashboard looks like here where I have a couple of different classes for my different challenges. And this is my Museum as Megaphone class. And so now I'm in the platform. So this would say your name, however you wanted to name the class. Love letters to the collection and then view challenge. So here we are in the challenge. 
And this is pretty much the same format. I think I'm right about this, Sam, from class to class, from challenge to challenge within Inspire Classroom, all the um, platforms will look like this. You'll have some background. Here is background about the Missoula Art Museum, our educational philosophy, our radical welcome. Here's our acknowledgement statement and a link to our website. So that's your background. The scenario in our iteration really describes the contemporary American Indian art collection and this particular um, exhibition, Love Letters to the Collection. And I did this for you. I gave you some learning goals right here. So you can totally cut and paste these right into your curriculum if you want to, if this is helpful. Um, if you need um, a defense for your principal or any type of way to notice how you're integrating what we've created with your existing curriculum, here's a rubric right there for you. So that's really for you to read. Um, there's a student library with some student resources. Um, this exhibition is based around the idea of decolonization. Some of you might be following um, Black Lives Matter and the wider social movements that are happening in the country right now. Museums have really been focused on how do we become decolonized for a long time. Museums are colonial institutions, traditionally set up um, with that hierarchical structure. And although MAM is a contemporary art museum, so we don't have artifacts, we only um, share contemporary art, the art of our time that's being created now. Um, so it's a little bit different, but still we are that top-down paradigm and we want to move away from that. So decolonization is an idea of welcoming a plurality of voices into the museum. And for older students, there's a webinar that you can watch. And um, that's a really a, a deep dive um, into the democratic principles being applied to a museum that might be interesting for them. Teacher library, um, FAQs from teachers, a letter for parents if you want to let them know that we are, what you're doing with the platform. Um, museum is megaphone, how it benefits the kids, how it benefits teachers, parents, and caregivers. We're all teachers now. Um, and how it's benefiting MAM in terms of outreach and becoming more democratic institution. So you can read through all of that. Um, the challenge steps are the meat of the course. And so the first four steps are kind of getting you, getting the kids involved in MAM's um, educational philosophy. So we have some videos to watch. Welcome to the collection. Um, we tell you at the top how much time it should take to move through the module um, and what you're gonna learn in this module. So they're kind of setting the stage. Um, we talk about how to look at art, how to be creative, how the collection was established. I'm just moving through, through these really quickly um, so we can get to the art making. And then this one, there are many ways to write a love letter. So in these modules, basically what students are gonna be creating are love letters, but we're not, we're not limiting that to an actual letter. It can be a piece of art. Um, we talk about artists overcoming fear, artists flipping our perspective, just getting them ready to create. And then here's some examples. You could perform your love letter. You could create a dance, a piece of music. You could use a Mad Lib that we have offered you here. And then we jump into the different artists. So module five and on are each a different artist from our contemporary American Indian art collection. And today we're gonna do a deep dive with Donna Lutz. So I'm gonna walk you through one module. We're gonna do it together. And that way you'll feel really confident if you wanna share this with your students. So right up front, we let you know how long it might take. Um, here, what you need, pencil and paper. Here are some standards and some essential understandings that you will be connecting to. And then these red tabs are sort of the action items. First, we're gonna look. Then we're gonna discuss. Then there's some things to read if you wanna know more about the artist. And then there's a love letter that's been written to this piece of art by another person. And the selector, Chris Latre, in this case, he chose to write to Donna Luz 
they are from the same tribe. And so his um, writing and all of your love letters and your students' love letters will become part of the permanent record of this piece of art. And then here's a little bit about Chris and then a little bit about the Little Shell Tribe of the Chippewa, which just became the eighth federally recognized tribe in Montana. And I might have that number wrong. Don't, don't quote me on that. Um, and then here's the email. Each artwork has an email where you can email your love letter directly there. So that's kind of what the modules look like. And um, if you come to the museum, you'll see all of this work in person. Um, but if you can't, you can meet all of these amazing artists, Kevin Redstar, Lillian Pitt, John Quick to See Smith, John Hitchcock. You can see all of the art and meet the artists on this platform. And this is just gonna keep growing because it's gonna be up for a year or more. This is Corky Claremont's split war shield that we talked about in the session yesterday. So I'm gonna go back to um, stop sharing the screen. If I can figure out how. <laughs> okay, so I can see you all again. So any questions so far? And you can just unmute if you have a question about what I just showed you. Oh, Sam, it, oh, you, you got them the challenge code, great. All right, good. So, um, so we're just gonna jump in then in our next um, little bit. First, I'm gonna ask you to gather some supplies and I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. Your supplies could be a pencil and paper. They could be um, some collage things that maybe you wanna rip up paper or you wanna um, use really anything. It could be a pillowcase and some Legos. Um, sidewalk chalk is something we're recommending, but we're not going outside right now, so um, so don't do that. Um, but if does everybody have something nearby that they can create with? Okay. And if you need to get up and get that right now, this is a great time to do that. And in the meantime, if there are any questions, just either unmute or type them into the chat. And in the meantime, while we're waiting for folks to be ready, I'm going to put the artwork up full screen so everybody can see it. Um, and when we, when we start talking about the artwork, oh, I love it. My students are artistic. I'm not, this could be rough. Don't even worry about it. I, first two things, okay? So number one, even if you don't feel artistic, don't say that to your students because they want you to be in it with them. So there's some stuff at the beginning of our modules about sort of embracing failure and embracing mistakes and how mistakes are part of the process and growth mindset and all of that. So I hope that all of you as teachers today will be my students and will embrace your growth mindset, which is the whole idea that I'm not good at it yet. Um, Oh, great. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. And a sense of humor is key. If you have a sense of humor about your art making, that sort of dispels the, um, the anxiety in the room, especially your own anxiety. Um, a really wonderful icebreaker, which we're not going to have time to do today, but I'll just give you this tip. Um, you can Google it. It's called blind contour drawing. And what you do is you pair the students up. Some people are nodding two by two and they look at each other and they draw without looking at their paper. And it always comes out funny and everybody laughs. As soon as you've laughed, then that your anxiety level goes down. So getting students to laugh at the beginning of a class is really, really awesome because then they're open to learning. So does that make sense? Do other people already do stuff like that, like blind contour and uh, icebreakers? Yeah, art should not be such a serious thing. You know, there's a great Picasso quote and I'll, I won't be able to get it exactly right, um, but it's something like we're all born artists and I spent my whole life trying to get back there. Um, a lot of times we sort of get a little tense, you know, as we get into like fifth grade, sixth grade, we get a little self-conscious. And if we don't have a great atmosphere, 
of, of acceptance, sometimes we get a little, you know, judgy. Um, so we all have to kind of work against that. Okay, so if everyone's got their materials, first we're gonna talk. So I won't be able to see you, so you're gonna have to unmute and just speak out. Um, I'm going to make share my screen and make the artwork full screen, and I'm gonna ask some open-ended questions, and we will just have a little convo, just like you would have with your class. Okay, so I think I can get rid of this. There. All right, so this is about as big as I can make it. Full screen. And so the first question we always start with is what do you notice? And the reason we start with what do you notice and what do you wonder is because everyone can access those questions. Everyone can see um, something to notice and something to wonder. So let's just take the first two or three minutes and first of all, I'll just ask you to look and maybe make a note or two on your paper about things that you notice about this painting. And it's always good to give kids a moment to notice quietly so that our, um, our super, um, super hand raisers don't get all the, um, all the momentum. So a couple minutes to notice quietly what you're noticing and what you wonder, and then we'll share. So you can just popcorn style, go ahead. It's okay if it's awkward and we talk over each other. Who can start us off with something they notice? I notice a crowd. A crowd, okay. Fire. Fire. Silhouettes. Silhouettes. And you might have to define that word for students, you know, and I, can you see my cursor when I'm going around like this? Yeah. Yes. yes. So you might you might just drag it around like this and explain to them that what a silhouette is. And if they say, "I see fire," you might say, um, "Can you say more about that? Where where do you see the fire?" It looks like a family. Hmm. What makes you say that? I thought of the baby, and I saw like a mom and dad together. Possibly, it just maybe looked like a family to me. Okay. Good, and so when I say, can you tell me more about that, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm encouraging the students to give me more information and give evidence. So even, I might even push them to name, like is it on the left-hand side of the picture? Like I'm sort of guiding the cursor, but, but I'm gonna guide based on what you say to me. So a couple of other things we notice. I wonder what direction they're facing. Mm. Yeah, because they're silhouettes we can't tell. I looks, wonder what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're gathering around something or maybe a person. Mm -hmm. Looks somber. Somber. What makes you say that? Um, just because there's not like hands in the air, I guess. They're, mm -hmm. they're just looking at something. Yeah, and if you got a comment like that, you could say to students, okay, put your, put your body in the gesture of the body, one of the bodies that you see here, and let them really embody what that feels like. Their hands are down, maybe the shoulders are a little bit down like this. Mm -hmm. so maybe one head is kind of angled towards another one. So that kinesthetic activity of actually embodying the figure can really help the students get into the feeling of the piece. Let's get maybe three more things that we notice or wonder. I wonder why some of the heads are gesturing down. Like that one. Mm -hmm. That one. Maybe two more comments. I wonder what time of day it is. Mm. I wonder if it's a funeral. Ooh, what makes you say that? 
Well, because of the fire, um, if it's an Indian funeral, they'd be burning their things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Great. group appears to be holding something. What makes you say that? Um, just the front shapes on the left holding the red shape. So if the fa if the figures are facing us, they could be holding that red shape. That's the way it appears to me. Yeah. So um, this is a good place to let students know that when artists do an artwork that's semi abstract. So an artwork can be realistic, it can be abstract, or it can be a mix, a semi abstract artwork, which this one is. So the artist isn't telling us every single detail. So it's okay if some of us see the figures as facing away and some of us see the figures facing towards us. So it's good to get lots and lots of um, comments so that you can um, validate all of them. That way the student, I mean, we don't want them to live, leave with misinformation, but in art there are always multiple right answers. So really just repeating back what they're noticing and um, validating that. So um, I'm gonna ask another question. Um, why, why do we think that Donna Luz might have chosen to leave out the facial features? Mm. To create fact, a simplified emotion. Okay, maybe to make it a little more simple, you're not distracted by the faces. Mm -hmm. Maybe to show that um, we communicate through body language, like we can show emotion through body language or stance, um, not just facial expression or spoken language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe um, to equalize the, the human form in terms of you know, skin color or, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, gender. Mm -hmm. Well, the heads forward and the shadows would be like a sad time. Mm. And yeah. maybe we don't want to show our emotion if we're feeling sad. Yeah, sometimes we don't want to show that emotion or that emotion gets shown in different ways like body language or even proximity, the way everyone is kind of gathered close together, um, almost like they're all in a huddle or hugging. Mm -hmm. So my last question is related to what we were just talking about. And first I'm gonna have us just count the colors how many colors do we see in this painting? Four. I see about four. Maybe four, yeah. And so in art, there's a term for that called limited palette, which means you're not using all the colors. Donna Luz has obviously chosen very specifically to use these four colors and also to use these kind of like edges where she's obviously layered the paint so it looks like the brown background went on first and then she painted over to kind of carve out the silhouettes so we're kind of taking apart the artist's um, process but my question is why do you think donna luce might have wanted to only use limited palette why not use all the colors maybe just using the four direction colors Ooh, are these the four direction colors? Well, for some tribes, they're different for different tribes. Okay. Instead of black, it could be blue. Okay. I think to create a focus. Mm -hmm. And with the colors being as they, they're kind of angry in, in a sense, like maybe they're dealing with those, you know, grieving, grieving stages and they're angry at whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I didn't notice until you silhouetted the, the, the silhouettes, the people, I didn't notice that color until you, you were saying it. Like, I just thought it was all black. 
Mm -hmm. until you outlined it and were talking about the color and then all of a sudden it kind of just kind of glowed off of their mm -hmm. silhouettes. I'm glad you I'm glad you said that because this is another thing that this conversational looking does is our students and us will notice things on our own but the longer we look and the more time we take and the more we hear other people's observations other things start to click and plus your students are learning how to have this conversation how to how to have an opinion notice something share it build off of others ideas um, as young as third and fourth grade um, students can do this and the more they do it the more they love it and the more they really get excited about looking at an artwork and if you'll notice i'll unpack the teacher side of it a little bit I only have four questions for this activity, and you can write your own questions. The way to write the questions is always start with what do you notice and what do you wonder? Those are your first two questions always, just to slow down that looking process. And your students might wanna jump, none of you did, which was fantastic. They might wanna jump to judgment or interpretation right away. And what we're trying to do is not do that. We're trying to stay more in the just exploring and being curious and looking before we start, you know, interpreting or making any kind of like good or bad um, judgment. Then my second two questions are more about unpacking the art. So I asked you, um, why might the artist have chosen not to put in the facial features? And I don't have like an answer for that that I'm, I'm trying to get you all to go to but the variety of answers that you came up with are all correct, you know, all good and deep in the learning. And then my last question was, it's limited palette, why, why might she have chosen that? So four questions, and each module has questions like this, but you can also pick an artwork on your own and make up your own questions. The, the sort of magic is that the questions are open-ended. They can't be answered with yes or no, which means that there, nobody can say yes and then sit back. It's always, there's always a conversation. There's always thinking and building off of each other. So any questions about the questions? <laughs> How did that feel um, looking with those questions? Uh, comfortable okay i think you kind of said this but letting us be like like having questions that didn't have right answers especially just what do you notice and what do you wonder is really free yeah and what we've learned and this is kind of the gold standard of education in museums is allowing students to make a personal connection with a piece of art before we give them all the factual information really opens them up to learning and, and hearing the content. So if I had started with um, Donna's tribal affiliations and where she lives and how old she is, like you might have zoned out a little bit. But with, with starting with the interactive looking part, now aren't you more curious about Donna and like what her um, history and scenario is? And I will share that with you and then we'll get right into the art making. So I want to, um, I want to share, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can share you a quote, um, which is in the curriculum from Donna. And we also, I put in the handouts folder today, a worksheet based on, based around this lesson that you can also use. Um, you can just print out and use on your own. So here's a quote. Donna Luz is, um, this painting is called Family Watch. So you're right about it being a family. Um, the exhibition that she had at MAM from 2009 to 2010, um, she had this work in there and it was a, a piece called, the, from, a, from a series called the Silhouette Series. And talking about this series, Donna says, I tried to keep a blank mind and to paint unconsciously or subconsciously rather or rather to paint the negative space around a shape i left the shape dark and then studied the composition for a while looking for shapes as i would look for shapes in a summer cloud later i understood that i had painted my autobiography so 
So that's a really solid English language arts connection that you can make right there to autobiography. And you know, what is an autobiography and, and how is Donna showing us her autobiography through this art? And I wanna pop back um, just for a sec before we get into the um, art making. I'm just looking for my tab, which I lost for a second. Um, back into the curriculum where you can see, oh, sorry, I think I X'd out of it. Um, where you could see her um, tribal affiliations. Her mother was Matisse and her father was, I'm so sorry. I'm going to go back and grab that for you while you're working. Um, but I want to get you started on your art project because we don't have tons of time. And then I'll go back and pull that up and share it with you afterwards. Um, any questions so far about the about Donna Luce or the the process that we're doing so far? I just want to say thank you for the questions first because I have not done that with my students in the past. I always try to front load them with the artist. Um, and so it's definitely a much more powerful approach. So thank you. Oh, good. I'm glad that you felt that. I, I still remember the first time I was taken through that process and it was like a, it was like a warm um, bath to me. I was like, yay, I get to be connected to this piece of art um, without having all that, you know, content in between. Um, so what I'm going to invite you to do for the next 15 minutes, so it's 11.08, so we'll have, well, maybe about 12 minutes, is to grab your art materials, and I'm going to bring you over to my um, little art um, setup over here. And so um, I know it's kind of on an angle, but I hope you can see it a little bit. Um, there are many ways to do this silhouette project. And working just with materials you have at home, you could work with markers, you could work with, um, these are watercolor pencils, which are my favorite. If, if your students are going to purchase one art supply, these watercolor pencils are great because you can draw and then you can paint water on top of them and they turn into watercolor. Um, they have them at Michael's. But what I was going to show you today is just taking a simple string or pipe cleaner you do a piece of yarn, you can just take a piece of paper or even just a white towel or pillowcase, which you might have around. I mean, this is gonna be an ephemeral piece of art. It's not gonna stay, but you can take a picture and your students can take a picture and you can just create your silhouette in whatever way you want to with the string. You could create your own family members. Um, you don't have to have everybody huddled up together. You could have some space especially now with COVID, we might have students who want to sort of describe this space that's happening with their family members right now. And then to color in, if you're on paper, you could color in with markers or paint or colored pencil, but you could also take any kind of paper you might have around and you can just fill in with the paper. So these are a few different options of how you might do this project just with what you have around your house. If you had Legos or different colored beads, you could fill in with the beads. Um, I just happened to have like some wrapping paper. Um, you might have colored uh, construction paper, um, or if you're not doing it this way, you can just take your markers and you can just begin to draw your silhouette. And the wonderful thing about the silhouette, I love this project because you don't have to be able to draw, quote unquote, realistically, to create these shapes that stand in for your family. And if you want to put, you know, hats or maybe identifying um, shapes on there, you can do that too. So I'm gonna turn you guys loose for a few minutes to work on your project on your own. And if you have questions as you're working, you can just pop them in the chat and we will come back together in about 10 minutes and share um, what we've made.
So Jenny, I just have a question about what you would be doing right now in a, like, would you be doing, be walking around? I'm so glad you asked that question because this is something I've been thinking a lot about with remote learning, because if we were in a classroom, we would be walking around and we would be being able to see what everybody's doing and if folks are struggling. Um, I think if it was students, I would ask them to keep their cameras on so that I could see what they were doing or at least see them. And then maybe what I would do, I mean, there's two schools of thought. There is neuroscience to tell us that if people are making art, students are working, their brain is lighting up in a certain number of areas, right? And the minute we ask them to speak about their art, we interrupt all of those lights and a different set of lights come on. So I would always, when my principal, I was afraid my principal would be at the door, so I would always be asking kids, "What? tell me about your art. And then I learned that I was kind of disrupting their creative process by doing that. So I've learned to kind of be okay with more silence um, in the classroom while they're working. Does that make sense? So even though I just said that about not interrupting you while you were working, I am going to interrupt you while you're working. <laughs> um, keep working, but I'm going to read some stuff to you from Donna's um, love letter while you're working just for the sake of time. Um, so here's a little bit about Donna Luz. Donna Luz was born in Wyoming, one of eight children of a homesteader mother and a Matisse father. So I was wrong about that, sorry. She began teaching art in the Billings Public School System in the early 1960s, while simultaneously carving out a reputation as a prolific exhibiting artist. In addition to these accomplishments, she held state level positions in the Montana Arts Educators Association, the Montana Institute of the Arts, and the Montana Institute of the Arts Foundation. She was a prolific artist throughout her life, And then we have the quote, she died at the age of 87 in Missoula in 2018. And so Chris Latre, who is also Matisse, um, chose this piece and here's his love letter to Family Watch. I love this, this silhouette piece by the late Donna Luz. Like me, she was Matisse and a member of the Little Shell Tribe. I love the color and the mood, but it speaks mostly to me in the anonymity of the people in the silhouettes. They are there, but we don't know them. We might even overlook them. In all likelihood, most of us will. In that is the story of Donna and of my people. We have been here longer than almost anybody. Few have heard of us, fewer still care but we know who we are and we will remain when others are long gone. Only now, now you will know us. And Chris Latre is the owner of the Fact and Fiction Bookstore in Missoula and is also an author. And he's of Chippewa Cree Matisse, Matisse descent and an enrolled member of the Little Shell Tribe of the Chippewa. Did you want us to share these now or? Yeah, I would love to share. And so, yeah, playing music while the students are working is a great idea. The music does not interrupt the lights that are lighting up, but be careful not to use music with words because if there are words, that does disrupt. So it's something about the verbal areas of the brain and the creative, the left-right balance um, that gets um, disrupted by that. And you could even choose music that goes with your artwork. Um, if it's a tribal piece, you could try to look for something from that tribe. Um, and I wanted to say one thing back to, I forget who was uh, mentioning about the four directions, colors. One thing that's amazing when you're teaching Indian education or any type of, of um, connection with 
the Contemporary American Indian Collection, there are always students who know more than I do for sure. And so it's a wonderful way for the student to be able to step up and amplify their voice by sharing their tribal knowledge um, with the other students. And, and that's just a bonus that happens. Um, and I'll encourage you, even if you're not teaching in a school where you have, where you think you have tribal students, you probably do have tribal students. And that has been a wonderful surprise to me in Missoula that almost every group that I lead, um, I have students who raise their hand and tell me their tribe and then contribute something to the discussion based on that. So yeah, I would love to share and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put an email address in the, um, in the chat and if you would like to it would be so wonderful if you did want to um, email a photo of your piece that you created directly to family watch we will um, put that into the permanent record of this artwork so if you i don't know if you guys can tilt your computer to show your piece that you created or if you have something that you can hold up but let's try, we can, I want to share individually too, but I would love it if we could just take a moment to just look at what everybody created. So let's take a minute to try to, um, if you can, if you're on a desktop and you can't, um, no worries. Oh, great. Did we have a digital um, creator there, Christine? Oh, fantastic. That is great. Thank you for holding those up. Yeah, so it works with it works with colored pencil. I see regular pencil. You can do it on notebook paper. I see someone has used blocks on the floor. Fantastic. Trisha, that's awesome. We've since you said all ages, I did include all the ages here and you inspired all kinds of different artwork. And it's all very ephemeral. That is fantastic. Ephemeral is great. You can always take a picture to capture it. And I love that you had a group project happening there. So if you have a pod or you have um, folks that are working together or even families, if you wanted to do a family night activity at your school, you could use something like this too. So who else would like to share? Thank you, Trisha, for sharing and um, with your group there. Who else would like to share theirs? Um, specifically or talk to us about their process or what they used you can just unmute yourself i'm kind of hung up on a theme but the theme that i was trying to create was the idea of geology and mountains and how in time you have up What's the word? The growing of mountains. But then I'm stuck on a theme right now in which we as children, we rise and we grow and our silhouette rises. Then we're very, very strong like the mountain peak. And then un very unfortunately, as we grow older and we're in nursing homes, we just kind of disappear. So with this whole COVID crisis and not able to visit people in the rest homes, that's kind of where my mind is right now. Thank you, Jim. I have a feeling that's where a lot of our minds are right now, is thinking about the fragility, um, you know, of older populations. Thank you. Anyone else want to share? We have time for maybe a few people to share. RJ, you're muted. Um, this is just trying <laughs> to show a sense of, and I just used some paints that I had. Um, um, I'm really into the idea of a sense of place um, and the, the mountains and the, the cities and the rivers. That's great. So are your, are your mountains representing people or are they representing mountains? <laughs> no, I, I guess this whole thing is just um, they, um, a sense of place with people mm -hmm. that I think isn't really important. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of places in the world, even close by that, you know, we live in a place where we 
are very connected to our sense of place and there's a lot of places that are not and so i've always been interested in art that's a has a sense of place for people that's yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you, RJ. And I just want to point out from the three shares that we've heard so far, how different the art is, because this project, not only the open ended questionings of looking, but also the looseness of the project is allowing for different interpretations. And your students, you know, your students, so whether they'll feel comfortable with that freedom to express what's going on for them right now, like Jim was saying, you know, the 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 covid situation is really you know present for him for trisha her kids are there so it's like the kids are going to be in it so what's going to happen there rj's talking about sense of place an open-ended project that will allow the students to express whatever's going on for them um, and i'm just curious did anyone else express a different idea than the ones that we've seen so far so that we can just get a, a nice range? Um, I was I'm not sure if this is, con oh, go ahead. So Tammy and then Cindy. Go ahead. I was wishing that I had deeper colors than what I have, but this is kind of trying to represent what I am personally going through right now as a mother. Um, this year I have a child going off to college and then next year I do as well. And so it's, it's exciting, but very sad for me as well. And then as you can see, the student is very excited for what they're going, go, you know, the brighter colors I was trying to represent, the excitement they have on moving on in life, so. And I think also your, your, the directionality of your marks also, I don't know if that was intentional, but it's it's showing us that kind of movement across the page. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thanks, Tammy. Cindy, did you want to share? So <clears throat> I had drawn a picture. It's just a pencil figure. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's um I love back photos when you take a photo of people walking away from you so that's what i tried to create here of us uh, this is our back photo of my family and i'm the the shorter one now it used to be our son in the who's now in the middle used to be over here but now he's in the middle because he's taller than i am and my husband and our dog and um so just are are hugging each other from the back that's awesome. I don't know if you can see what Michael's holding up. He's got a very similar, a photo with a very similar um, look to what you're describing. Oh, let me see if I can find him. Michael? Okay. Yeah, we're on oh, yes. I love those photos. Yeah. That's beautiful. And, and that's back to our question of are the silhouettes facing us or facing away? That's sort of two different ways to, to look at it. Um, I think we have time for maybe one more share. Anybody have an approach that was different to all the ones we've seen so far? I did. I used three-dimensional objects. Oh, uh, great. Um, I don't view myself as an art person, so this is a bit of a challenge, but I'm glad I did it. So. Um, I'm in my classroom working and um, my silhouette is of our family. I'll turn it around so everybody can see. Okay. Can you see that okay? Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So the apple is my husband. Um, can you pull it, push it down a little bit, Denise? We see the top, but we don't see the whole image. It's a, I know it's a little tricky to um, tell what direction you're turning the laptop. Okay. There you okay. go. Yeah, good? Uh-huh. Okay. So the apple is represents my husband. He's the apple of my eye. I am next. I love to play outside in the garden. The next picture of the compass is um, for my son who loves to travel. And the last is the, my other son who is very crafty. Fantastic. So moving into like um, 
Denise has actually taken us into symbols, which could be a whole other like um, unit and a whole mm -hmm. other artwork that you could look at. And in fact, there are um, some images in the Inspired Classroom Love Letters collection that do focus a lot on symbols and especially symbols from ancestors. And Lillian Pitt uses a lot of symbols from the Columbia River Gorge petroglyphs in her artwork. So um, great, Denise, good job. So I'm really thrilled with the variety of ways that you all responded today. And I hope that you were able to get some good ideas um, to take away with you. And I'm gonna put my email in the chat just so that you have a way to reach me directly. If you have any questions or any problems getting into the course, or um, you know, if you want some support about teaching art remotely, we are gonna be doing lots of webinars and different things you can get OPI credits for, um, for popping into those too. Um, do we have any questions um, right now as we're closing out? And um, so I, I just put my email, it's Jenny, J-E-N-N-Y, at MissoulaArtMuseum.org. So don't hesitate to reach out. And um, I'll stay on for a little while if anybody, or if we can, Sam, I don't know if we have any, or is there another session right after us? Nope, this is the last session of the day. The last session, all right. So um, thank you all for coming. You can unmute yourself and say goodbye. Or um, if you want to stay on and ask me a question at all, you can do that too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Jenny, Thank you. always appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Great Thanks class. For coming. Thanks a lot. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. Bye bye now. Bye. So if you're staying on for questions, you can totally unmute yourself and we can just do like a small group Q&A if you like. Um, I have a quick question. Um, do you have um, any art videos, lessons like recorded that we could show our students? The, yes, um, within the courses that are on the Inspired Classroom platform, almost all of them have some recordings at the front end, like the first three modules are short little four minute videos of us um, basically setting the stage. So, you know, getting them into the whole feeling of you don't have to be perfect. There are lots of ways to do it. So definitely you can utilize those without the rest of the course too. We haven't yet made sort of standalone art lesson videos because we're trying to do more um, bringing the collection objects and the exhibition artists to you all. Um, but I have a feeling that's going to be coming soon. Okay, great. And you said those are, those are on the Inspired Classroom website? Yeah, so okay. you go on Inspired Classroom. I'm not sure what grade you're teaching. Um, okay. Christine Forth. So we have the love letters would be great for you guys, but there's also the fifth grade art experience, which it's just called fifth grade art experience. It could be easily for fourth or sixth, and that will have a like a whole different set of modules and things to move through. That's awesome. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. Hi, Kristen. What's up? Hello, nothing. I just was going to thank you again. I always uh, enjoy your sessions and seeing you. Thank, thank you. you. Great. Have to a good see weekend. You too. Bye.